Hi, my name is uh, Jim Benson. I'm your incumbent uh, candidate for Ward 2 in Commerce City, the northeast part of Commerce City. I've been your city councilman for the last four years, and I'm seeking your vote in the election this November. You know, I've been on the council for four years, and we've accomplished uh, quite a few things. There are still a lot of things that I've been working on that uh, need to yet be accomplished, specifically that I uh, essentially alone accomplished. I was able to get an initiative on the ballot back in 07 to change our, the date of our city elections from April of odd years to November of odd years. That was my deal. I wrote the, uh, the initiated uh, charter amendment and it did pass at the election in April of 07. I was uh, responsible for uh, uh, getting the YMCA after school program at the Stewart Middle School. I initiated that, let the people uh, at the school district and the YMCA work it out and uh, that started, I believe, in September of 2009, so I'm very proud to have been a part of that. Uh, also, four years ago, we did not have uh, a mailbox. We did not have a FedEx drop box. And because of my efforts, we were able to do that. And of course, we do have the, the King Supers that's opening, but I can't take full credit for that because that was a joint effort of our staff and everybody on the council. That was one issue. We have disagreements on this city council, but that was one issue where everyone has been in total agreement and now it looks like it's going to come to fruition within the next uh, several months. Uh, I'll continue to advocate for more uh, interconnected uh, parks and uh, trails uh, including the, uh, in the in the North Range, uh, continuing to advocate for more commercial development along uh, 104th uh, Chambers, 96th Avenue and Tower Road. Um, development of a rec center in the Northern Range. That's an expensive proposition. Uh, I don't yet know how we're going to do that, but it's something certainly that we ought to be looking at and working on. Also, one issue that I've run into from several people that I've talked to in the last couple of months in the campaign is the off-ramp from southbound uh, Tower Road onto westbound Pena Boulevard. This is the one-quarter intersection that was not completed. Uh, we signed an agreement with E-470 back in 95. E-470 did not want the competition of people coming down Tower Road for free and getting on Pena Boulevard. They wanted people to come down uh, E-470 to get on Pena Boulevard and thereby incur a toll. But that agreement expires January the 1st, 2012, and it says that if the ramp is not built by January 1st, 2012, it becomes the responsibility of E-470 to build the road and I'm going to do my best to make sure that uh, that money is in the E-470 budget for the years to come. Um, uh, we know that there's going to be a pipeline uh, built somewhere in Ward 2 at the request of Excel Energy to get natural gas from uh, it's Fort Lupton, from Fort Lupton down to the Cherokee gas electric generating plant. It's going to go through Ward 2 someplace and I've been working with uh, the Excel people to make sure that it's going to be installed in the proper place. Um, I will not uh, vote at any time for the imposition of a trash pickup fee. That has uh, uh, become an issue over the last six months. I think now it's been put off for another year, but I can tell you I'm not voting for that. It creates a lot of problems. Instead of having one truck in your neighborhood once a week, you might have five or six trucks from five or six different companies going on our residential streets, tearing up the roads. Uh, it's just uh, people might not want to pay for trash pickup, and so they dump their garbage someplace else. That would just be a really bad idea. We've never charged for trash pickup, and I'm not going to vote for it at any time. Uh, I'll vote against any sales tax on food that might be proposed. And I'm working on, uh, I'm sure that we've all noticed that when a house is being foreclosed on, especially in the summertime that uh, the water gets cut off, the foreclosing lender does not care about keeping the property up, the grass dies, the property just becomes uh, an, eyesore, an eyesore, and they don't care about keeping the property up there by hurting all of our property values. I've been working on trying to get an ordinance passed that would require those foreclosing lenders to keep the property up during the time that they own the property. Well, of course, number one at this point is going to be the development of the former dog track. That's uh, 65 acres. I know we're having uh, meetings around the city, about six meetings, I think, where citizens are urged to 
uh, attend and give their input into that situation. And I don't know, but that's our biggest uh, opportunity right now is how we're going to uh, handle that property and what, the, what usage is going to be made of it. Um, we have a lot of residential property in Ward 2. Uh, you can see vacant lots all over the place. There are still houses being built up there even uh, today, which is good. But we still don't have the growth and development that we had three or four years ago. We need to get these residences built out and that's accomplished by uh, the build out and the, the development of retail and commercial projects along 104th and Chambers and uh, Tower. Uh, once you do that, people are encouraged to move into the residences in this area and that increases the tax base. Uh, the way that you increase your revenue is not by increasing the tax rate, it's by increasing the tax base and that means getting in more retail and commercial development and thereby more residential development. Well, the number one challenge is the, uh, the image of the city, which uh, is changing for the better. It's not where I want it to be. There are other ways that uh, might help it change a little bit faster um, than the way it is changing at this point in time, but it takes uh, time. Um, we need to have uh, parity and uh, we need to ha work for one city we need to have parity and spending between the North Range and the South Range. That does not ex uh, exist right now. Um, and it creates a division between the North and the South parts of the city. We need to have one city, and that means parity and spending our city money. Um, and as I said before, to raise tax revenues by increasing the tax base, not the tax rate. That's one of the, uh, the challenges. Um, and to create new jobs thereby you increase the population. People that work here want to live here because they don't have to travel very far to work. And so by all of these things, when we start having the development that should occur, we increase the image of the city. That causes all of our property values to go up and people are just a lot more happy under those circumstances. It means that what we want to create and what we are starting to create right now is a community with strong working families, uh, people who want to live here because we have great schools, we have great uh, shopping, retail development, uh, restaurants, uh, whatever. Uh, just a good place to live and raise a family in a prosperous city. My favorite aspect would be the, the friendliness of the people throughout the city. I mean, I represent the people in the northeast part of town. I represent everybody in town, but I'm elected by the people in the northeast area. And regardless of who I'm talking to, from whatever part of town they're from, they're always very friendly, they're eager to, to discuss issues that are going on in the city. And that to me uh, means that we have a lot of people who are interested in the welfare and the future of our city. And that's my favorite thing.